can Mercedes win the Constructors Championship this weekend in Brazil? Will Ferrari force them to wait until the final race in Abu Dhabi? And after their great race in Mexico, what can Red Bull do? The only way to find out is in this video. So after Lewis Hamilton won his fifth World Championship, here we are in Brazil. And more specifically, Sao Paulo for another edition of the Brazilian Grand Prix. Well, as we've seen over the past, just anything here can happen, whether that is on track or to do with the weather. And when it comes to the weather, hopefully it does rain because it is so exciting when it does. But here are some stats about this Interlagos circuit. The track is just over four kilometers long and the race will be run over 71 laps. The first Grand Prix here was back in 1973 back in the days of Brazilian great Emerson Fittipaldi. And the lap record is a 111 flat set by Max Verstappen last year. I wonder if they're going to be able to break the 1 minute 10 barrier. Most likely in the dry they should. But of course we will see. Now last year in Brazil it was Ferrari and Sebastian Vettel who were the ones who won. After Vettel lost out to Lewis Hamilton in the World Championship the race before in Mexico. It is kind of a similar situation to this season. And maybe, just maybe, Vettel and Ferrari will win again. But to be honest, the only reason Vettel and Ferrari won was because Lewis Hamilton crashed out in qualifying. But still put in a great drive to come from the back to finish in P4. And finish only just behind the race winner. And hopefully this weekend we do get a close and competitive battle between Mercedes and Ferrari. But now guys, let's preview how the top teams are going to do in Sao Paulo. For Mercedes, this race represents the chance for them to clinch the Constructors' Championship. Something they've done ever since 2014. And something they deserve to win yet again. But when it comes to this race pace-wise, I don't think Mercedes will have the fastest car. Because I don't think that car is as quick as, say, the Ferrari around this kind of track and Ferrari have been better in the last two Grand Prix's. So even if they do win the Constructors, they may not do it in style. But I wouldn't be surprised if they did win because they have been so good at getting results in the races in 2018. But as long as they do win the Constructors, I don't think Mercedes care where they finish, as they want to take both titles once again. Now for Ferrari, the last couple races have been very good since they took some aero parts off of their car. For example, at the US Grand Prix they won that race and at the Mexican Grand Prix they were definitely faster than Mercedes. And with this kind of track I wouldn't be surprised if Ferrari were not only faster than Mercedes but were fastest overall. This is a track which really should suit that Ferrari. Because as we saw in Mexico when Sebastian Vettel was passing a couple of people, that Ferrari in a straight line is so fast. And they do have the best power unit on the grid. And the track we're at this weekend at the end of the day is a power circuit. And Ferrari in 2018 when it comes to the power circuits have been the best. They may not dominate and get a 1-2 finish but they really should win this Grand Prix. But I don't see realistically how they can win the Constructors. And nor do they deserve to win it. But there's definitely a great chance for Ferrari to win this weekend. After the Mexican Grand Prix where Red Bull were so fast. They now come to a track where I don't think they're going to be as fast as they were there. And in fact in normal conditions I don't see how Red Bull can possibly win. Now I know with Sao Paulo it is at a high altitude. But nowhere near as high as Mexico City. And the altitude here does not make that massive difference here than it does say in Mexico. When it comes to who is fast and who is not. And if you just look at last year in Mexico Red Bull did have the fastest car but then at Brazil they were third fastest. And that's where I think they're going to be this weekend. The Renault power unit just does not have enough to compete with those top two teams. If it does rain I wouldn't be surprised if they did get a podium but if it is in the dry I don't see how they can possibly get that. So it's going to be kind of back to normal for Red Bull. But now let's look at the driver's standings. Lewis Hamilton of course is your world champion in first place with Vettel in second and Kimi Raikkonen in P3. Bottas is in P4 with Max Verstappen catching in P5 with Daniel Ricciardo in P6. Hopefully Ricciardo for once can finish a race but realistically I don't think he will. His misery is likely to go on. 
Now though, let's look at the midfield and how they are going to do. For one of the McLaren drivers in Stoffel Van Dorn, Mexico was a very good Grand Prix. Where Van Dorn finished in 8th, which is a great result for McLaren in the Constructors. As they're trying desperately to fend off Force India for P6. But I think they're going to come crashing back down to earth here in Sao Paulo. This track at the end of the day is a power circuit and McLaren are probably the worst in a straight line. And at power circuits in 2018, McLaren have been quite frankly horrific. Just think of Spa and Monza and even Suzuka. So in the dry, I think they're going to be most likely at the back. If it does rain though, I wouldn't be surprised if Fernando Alonso did get into the points because the McLaren in wet conditions is a lot better in the dry. But again, realistically, I think they're going to be nearer at the back. And they better hope that Force India do not have a good result. Because this weekend, McLaren are going to go pointless. The race in Mexico was probably Renault's best race of 2018. And best race weekend since they came back into the sport. But like McLaren, they're going to come crashing back down to earth here in Brazil because that pesky engine of theirs is just not going to do well. Teams like Force India, Haas and Sauber and maybe even Toro Rosso should be beating them. Renault since the summer break at power circuits have not been good. They were quite good admittedly at Monza but at Spa and Suzuka they were not good at all. And when it comes to pure pace I just don't see how they have a good enough car to get in the top 10. But for Renault they've basically confirmed 4th in the Constructors. So as long as they confirm that at the end of this race weekend, I don't think they're necessarily going to care. Because at the end of the day, finishing 4th in the Constructors is what they set out to do. And they've basically achieved it. So I wouldn't be surprised if they took these final two races a bit easy. As in this season, they've got exactly what they wanted. The last few Grand Prix when it comes to getting results in the race have not been good for Force India. For example, at the US Grand Prix, you had Esteban Ocon getting disqualified. And then in Mexico, they didn't score any points when they really should have with both cars. And when it comes to finishing P6 and the constructors ahead of McLaren, I'm afraid that is just not good enough. They absolutely had to score points in Mexico and they failed. And now have to find at least 16 points to beat McLaren to 6th. Do you see them scoring 16 points in the final two races? Because I don't. But if they are to pull off that miracle, they have to be best of the rest here. Not only in qualifying, but also in the race. Because I've noticed in qualifying that they will be best of the rest, but then in the race they just don't perform. For example, at Kota Force India did have the best car, but then in the race they didn't show it. And they massively underachieved in Mexico. So this weekend they have to be at the front of the midfield. Normally this kind of track for Williams would be a very good track for them, but with the way they've been in 2018, it just isn't. As Williams are desperately waiting for 2018 to end. And unless there's loads of retirements in the Grand Prix, I don't see how Williams are going to score any points. I just hope for this team that 2019 is better. For the last few Grand Prix, Toro Rosso have been in good form and shown some good pace. But can they do that here? Or more importantly, can Honda do that here? And for me, when it comes to Honda, this is a very, very important race. Because on the 2018 calendar, this is the final power circuit. And the last real test of their power unit. And hopefully we will see if the upgrades on that power unit are actually working. And whether it confirms what we think that it's better than the Renault power unit. So I am very interested to see if they pass this test. And to be honest, I have my fingers crossed that they do. And if they do have a good result, that is going to get us very excited for 2019. As you cannot doubt, Honda have made so much progress in the last few races. So definitely watch out for Toro Rosso. The last two races for Haas have probably been their worst two races of 2018. The home race was a disaster and the last race in Mexico, they were nowhere in terms of pace. But for me, when it comes to this track, they have no excuses to not be good. This circuit should suit them to a T. Because during the season at power circuits, they have been good and they do have the best engine on the grid. 
If they don't do well here, I don't understand what is going on. And as I said pretty much going into Mexico, they have to be aggressive in this Grand Prix for me. Because they have pretty much lost 4th to Renault in the Constructors. So why not go out there and be aggressive, not too aggressive, and get out there and score some points. Because you never know what you could achieve by doing so. Now for me, they will be very close with Force India and Sauber this weekend, but they have to be right in the points. And they should beat Sauber because in the middle sector, I think Haas do have a better car. But hopefully here in Sao Paulo, Haas do get back to where they should be. And finally is Sauber who are going to be quick again this weekend. In the last few races they have been very very fast but just haven't scored the points that they probably should have. Mostly because of quite unfortunate moments. But after what they did in Mexico where Leclerc finished in P7 and Ericsson finished in P9 they should be scoring points here with at least one car. As that car is mighty down the straights. Now they will be very close to teams like Haas and Force India and Renault and Toro Rosso but they should again be in there for points. And even if they're slower than we expect they should be at least going for points with one car. Even if both cars fail to score any points. As this has been a strong end to 2018 for Sauber. Who have developed the most over this season. Going from the back of the grid to almost at the front of the midfield. What a great year for this team. Now though, let's look at the constructor standings. Mercedes are leading by 55 points from Ferrari in second and Red Bull in third. Mercedes should probably win it this weekend. And they do deserve to. Then it's Renault fourth, Haas in fifth, McLaren sixth and Force India in P7. Force India have work to do if they want to get that P6. And then in eighth is Saab with Toro Rosso ninth and Williams in tenth. Toro Rosso also have work to do. But guys, this is the content I'm going to be uploading to my channel for this Brazilian Grand Prix. All of these videos bar one are live streams. At 7pm on Friday, I'll be doing a practice review. And then a qualifying watch along at 4pm on Saturday. And then a review of qualifying on Saturday night at 9pm. Then at 10 past 4pm on Sunday will be the race watch along. With a race review at 6pm on Monday. And then of course the podcast on Tuesday between 4 and 5pm UK time. So hopefully you guys can come along and join us as always would be great to have you along. But I feel as though this race is a chance for Ferrari and Vettel to redeem themselves. And build confidence going towards 2019. 2018 results wise has been disappointing. But if Ferrari and Vettel can win this weekend. Then maybe they are setting themselves up for a successful 2019. But anyway guys, that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys to join our Discord server, the best way to get notifications for my videos. And don't forget to follow me on Twitter or check out my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below what are your predictions for this weekend. Please comment down below what you think about those topics. And until next time, it's been me, Chazzer HD. Goodbye.